Knife sharpening is not rocket science. Mankind has been sharpening knives since before the advent of fire. You can handle it. Here's a few rules to follow when you're getting ready to sharpen your knives. Number one, you cannot buy your way out of sharpening your knives. Even the most expensive, high quality knives still need to be maintained. Keep your knife sharp. Maintaining a sharp knife's edge is much easier than trying to restore a butter knife dull knife. Practice makes perfect. The more you try, the better you'll get at it. Don't worry that you're going to permanently damage your knife by trying to sharpen it. Last and most importantly, it's all about angle. Maintaining a consistent angle throughout the sharpening process is the single most important thing to do when you're sharpening. Okay, let's talk about my favorite tool to use for sharpening and keeping my knives shaving sharp at home. I use this, it's called a diamond steel. This is the brand that we sell at newwestknifeworks.com. It looks very much like a traditional metal steel or hone that comes with most knife sets, but it's a very different tool. This is made of metal and is used to polish or align the edge of the knife. A diamond steel has microscopic diamonds on the surface. And when you do that same honing motion that you do with a regular steel, you're taking metal away or sharpening the knife. Here's a good measure. If I take the chef knife, put no weight on it, and just pass it back and forth on the skin, it should slide right through if it's sharp. Look what it's doing here, it's not doing it. But we want a knife that's razor sharp and will pass through the food with no effort. To sharpen this, we're gonna use a DMT 12 inch fine grit diamond steel. First, quick thing on diamond steels, you wanna use medium to light pressure. If you use heavy pressure, you'll rub the diamonds off the steel and ruin it basically. So first, how do you hold the diamond steel? There's lots of different, different techniques that you can use. This is a kind of a classic culinary school style to hold it like this, straight up and down, I see fa fairly commonly as well. At home, I actually either rest it on the cutting board like this, or just hold it up in the air, and this is really, once you've had a lot of practice, probably what you'll do and what I see a lot of chefs do. Next and most important thing in sharpening is using the proper angle. So what you want is an angle between 15 and 20 degrees. Start like this, this is 90 degrees, take half of that, that's 45 degrees, half again is 22 and a half degrees, and then just a little bit more is gonna get you to 15 to 20. Maintaining that consistent angle all the way through the sharpening process is the most important thing to do when you're sharpening using either a diamond steel or a stone. Angle control is really the only thing that matters. One little trick to know if you're doing it right or not, if your knife has a bunch of scratches along the side of the blade here, that means you're not controlling the angle of your knife and you're hitting the knife flat somewhere in the process. Now the technique that I use when I'm sharpening my knives, if, if I'm doing what I should do and just keeping it sharp, I will start with doing 10 strokes on, on one side and then 10 going the other direction. Then I'll do five. Then I'm gonna do three on each side, then two and one. On those last three, two, one, I'm gonna use lighter pressure. And you are gonna to wanna to wipe your edge either with a cloth or wash it off because you are gonna have a little bit of metal filings on it. Let's see what we got. So now you can see it really just wants to fall right through that skin of that tomato. All right, now I'm gonna show you a little bit more advanced sharpening technique. This is something you can do to be faster and also a technique you can use on even more dull knives. I'm still gonna try to do even amount of sharpening on both sides, but instead of just going down the side, I'm just gonna scrape this back and forth, most importantly concentrating on controlling the angle. So while I'm doing this, I'm counting. Then I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the other side, and I'll do 10 and maybe five. I am moving a lot of metal here, so this is for a really dull knife. And that should, oh yeah, see that? I mean, that really needs to sharp there. All right, let's talk about how to sharpen your serrated knives. The most important thing on all serrated knives is, you can see that it's ground on one side and then not ground on the other. To sharpen a serrated knife, I'm gonna hone it, pretending that the serration isn't even there. Drawing it down the length of the blade, just like it's a normal knife. Especially with this wide serration on the super bread, you see the steel is just gonna follow down the grooves and grind the entire blade. The technique that I use for this, again, we're still using a 15 to 20 degree angle. I usually do 20 on the ground side, 
medium pressure. And then I'm gonna do three or four just off of flat on the non-ground side. If you go totally flat to the edge of the blade, you will scratch the knife. So just take it a little bit off of flat. You're going down here three or four times just to take what we call the burr off of the edge. And then you should be good to go. Whether it's your serrated knives, your straight edge knives, as soon as they won't cleanly slice a tomato, that's the time to sharpen them. So use these techniques I've shown you in a good quality diamond steel and all your knives will be sharp all the time. Remember, keep them sharp. Howdy, I'm Corey Milligan, owner of New West Knife Works here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. New West Knife Works was founded over 15 years ago when I was working in a kitchen much like this. I've always loved to cook and enjoyed using a fine knife and over 15 years we've really evolved to making some of the finest knives in the world. In your arsenal of knives you need to have your primary knife, your bread knife or serrated knife, and then the last one that we're going to talk about is a paring knife. The first and most important knife to select is going to be your main knife that you use 90% of the time. Starting from the biggest size, at New West Knife Works we make two different styles of chef knives. We've got the Phoenix line. This is what we call the 9. It's actually a 9 inch blade. A little bit more of a European style to the shape of the blade. And then in the Fusion Wood line we have what we call the Fusion Wood Chef. It's an 8 inch blade. It definitely has a more of an Asian design style to it with a little thicker in through the tip here. It's my experience amongst professional chefs that it splits right down the middle. A lot of chefs like a bigger, heavier knife. They think they can work with it better all day long. And then a lot of chefs really appreciate the very thin blade that just passes through food like butter. Next size down, which is by far the most popular knife amongst home users these days. This style of knife is called a Santoku. It's really a traditional Japanese chef knife shape. It's a little bit smaller than a chef knife. The blade is seven inches long. It's a little bit lighter in the hand a little bit more manageable for folks. This is what I find most home cooks who really like to cook really like to be in this size. This is kind of a nice smaller size chef knife as I would call it. Moving down in the sizes, these are both the same blade shape. This is called a petty knife. And then we also have the chopper here. I think of these as a little bit more of an European style blade design and this is more of an Asian style. If you aren't necessarily comfortable with a bigger knife, these size knives are still big enough to do everything you want to do on the cutting board, cut meats, vegetables, fruits, all that good stuff. The chopper definitely has a thicker, heavier blade, heavier feel to it. The petty knife is a very thin blade that I like the way it just goes through food really well with the point you can make turning cuts. Down here on the end we have what we call the mini chopper. Now this little knife is pretty small for, for your all around do all cutting board knife. The design reason for this really was you probably have someone in your family who uses a paring knife for everything they do. So this knife was designed for all those folks. With the wide blade as opposed to a narrow blade on a paring knife, it still leaves room for your hands on the cutting board and you can still do all that kind of chopping, cutting stuff that you do with a bigger chef knife. If you're comfortable with something bigger, I think realistically maybe something bigger is going to do more for you. But if you're afraid of big knives, this is still take care of business. These are the New West Knife Works Chef Knives Do-All Cutting Board Knives. One of these knives should be the knife that you buy first and do 90% of all your cutting with.